We have Gene Svarik here today with us at, in Cultivating Connections. He is the host coordinator for the 154th Annual National Grange Convention. Hey, Gene. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? So, Gene, um, I know I know your story. I get to know some of these folks pretty well. Um, but, you know, you seem like a normal guy. Uh, how in the world did you get roped into what seems like a giant job being a host coordinator? And what is that? Who, who are you in the Grange and what are you doing for us? Okay, well, when I'm very close to, to Betsy Huber here in southeastern Pennsylvania. And when she started mentioning she was looking at Valley Forge for an upcoming grain session, I told her I immediately wanted to be involved. Um, I live very close to Valley Forge, probably one of the closest people in the country as a Grange member to Valley Forge. It's also a big part of my life. Um, Valley Forge National Park is something I truly, truly love. When um, Danae and I were first dating, we took a lot of picnics there at Valley Forge, and I showed her the area. So it's a part of our early life, Danae and I together. And when Betsy was mentioning she was going to be in Valley Forge for national session. I'm like, I want to be involved somehow. And then when we were in Vermont national session 2018, we got together as a planning group and I volunteered to step up as the chairperson for uh, 2020 national session. I was very enthused about it. I had no hesitation at all. Um, part of the inspiration was I now I have one of the best support groups in the country to work with. So there, there's no question there that any part of this would fail with any type of people I have working with me. And not just Pennsylvania. I mean, where Valley Forge is located, if you're not aware, it's really close to New Jersey and Delaware. Um, so you have a couple of states that can come together and help, correct? Oh, absolutely. Within a hundred mile radius of Valley Forge, you have a large population of the country right there from New York City all the way down to Washington, D.C. and out to Pittsburgh area. We have a lot of strong Grange members in this part of the country and a lot of Grange members in this part of the country. So, and the states involved are from Pennsylvania all the way down to, into Florida. So we have a, a great group of people here in East to help put this convention together and make it very successful. And so you have a, a deep background in Grange. This is not your first rodeo, I assume. Um, tell me a little bit about your Grange history, your Grange story, and then um, how many conventions is this for you, Gene? Oh, sure. Um, well, to start off, I'm a third generation Grange member. Um, my grandfather brought me into the Grange at a, a very young age. We would help with our annual Grange Fair that he and Charlie Wismer put together. Charlie Wismer was a past Pen Pennsylvania State Master and he served on the National Executive Committee as well. So I grew up watching these two guys. They're both old local farmers here and I remember as a little kid just looking up to these guys and all the Grange knowledge they had. And of course family tradition is something that's important to me as well as Grange tradition. So I am one of those people who are involved in the Grange because of family. I know that doesn't always bring in a lot of people, but the family tradition and just the morals and values that the Grange teaches is something I truly believe in, I, I buy into. And I always say that if everybody was a Granger, how great the world would be. So it definitely is inspirational to me. Um, so I was involved from a very early age. Throughout college then, I kind of did fall out of the Grange, but then when I moved back to Pennsylvania about 2000, early 2000s, I got um, back involved again and just really took off with Keystone Grange here in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. Uh, and people just got wind of what I was doing, where I was going, and uh, Grange I was supporting, and I made my way to the state um, officer with Pennsylvania. I'm currently the gatekeeper with Pennsylvania. My first national session was honestly, honestly Washington, D.C. just a couple years ago, and Vermont was one we went to, and then Minnesota was uh, a little bit different. There I was actually working and interviewing people, getting ideas on what works for national session, what our general um, members want to see there. So I took a lot of their um, 
input and trying to implement that into Valley Forge to make, make it successful and happy for everybody. That's awesome. So this will be your fourth convention and yes. the three that you went to before have prepared you well enough to run this. Like I can tell because you guys have been knocking it out of the park with your meetings and planning. Um, tell me a little bit about what people should expect when they get to come to Valley Forge here in November. Uh, what you're going to see here in Valley Forge is a lot of local, a lot, lot of national wide history here. Valley Forge, as you know, the Washington encampment was there, um, probably saved our country uh, with George Washington camping there and bringing all the troops together. We are only a couple of minutes from Philadelphia. Um, I know a lot of our junior Grangers and our more senior members learned about Philadelphia and the history there in school. Uh, there'll be various tours where you get to see some of these historic sites in Philadelphia, um, Franklin Institute, uh, um, Independence Halls right there, the National Constitution Center, the Liberty Bell. Um, these are all iconic American um, symbols that we will get to see and we will be a part of. Valley Forge National Park is also directly across the street from the um, convention center and that is a free park to get into and there's just so much history right there. Um, you get to see log cabins, all kinds of monuments, memorials. Uh, hopefully the visitor center will be open by November as well. That's been under construction lately. Um, and within session, uh, we're going to try and have some new activities for juniors um, and keep people engaged. For your regular Grange member who's coming and doesn't want to necessarily sit in session, or they want to take a break from session and maybe have some workshops to get this, get everybody involved and just make sure everybody has a, a fun time there at session. And that sounds like a lot of what your role is as host coordinator, right, Gene? Yes, um, making sure all the different aspects that are involved are working like clockwork. There is a lot that goes on behind the scenes that the National Grange does and then the host committee does as well. It is quite uh, an undertaking. We've been working on this since Vermont 2018. So this definitely takes two years to put together. My philosophy has always been, let's keep momentum moving. So as we get closer, we don't have as much work to do. We can sit back and relax a little bit. But the, the team we have together, all these different committee members and committee heads having gone above and beyond to put this convention together. I am just one person of a much greater team who is working on this. So I think that I want to back up for a second because I, I'm realizing that some of our folks um, who are, are texting are mentioning things like we might not know what is in a convention. Um, if this is maybe a, a new territory for new members or someone who hasn't seen um, a convention before. So um, maybe I know that you might be able to define out what session it is and then what uh, what the de delegates do and those type of things. Because even though you're not one of those right now, um, I know that you know the flow of that. So can you talk a little bit about what the average Granger does at a convention and, and what session is and what delegates do and who they are and that type of stuff? Sure. Well, the delegates are usually the uh, state masters and another person from the state, sometimes their spouse, that come in and bring all the resolutions that their state has passed and bring it to the national level. Um, and those are discussed during session. Um, a lot of business goes on. Uh, it's also a time for the youth and juniors to come together from across the country. There's always activities for youth and juniors to do. Um, and your average Grange member who maybe not doesn't want to sit in session, there's uh, workshops going on. There is um, the mercantile going on. There's the Grange store. We get to see a lot of the projects that Grangers from across the country have been working on. You can get a lot of inspiration to take back to your state and your local Grange. So we are all on the same page across the country and working as one cohesive unit. Um, there's also a lot of serious business going on during convention. It's great to see how we work from the grassroots legislative action and getting the National Grange to accept some policy, pass some policy, and pass that on to Washington, D.C. So it's very exciting. This is um, us managing our government and making things happen in our own backyard. 
uh, if, if you ever get time to sit in session, I highly, highly recommend it because that is what our Grange is truly, truly about. It's also a lot of fun. Um, you get to see people from across the country that you may only see on Facebook uh, and you get to meet them in person and you're instant friends with them. So it's, it's like a big family reunion. It truly is. And I look forward to session uh, more than anything right now. Yeah, I think, um, I, I don't know whether I like to call it family reunion or homecoming, but it, it definitely is the feel of both. Both, yes, absolutely. There's people I look forward to, to seeing that. You just want to give them a big hug when you see them, and hopefully in November we can do that. So speaking of, of that, um, I think that we're all obviously watching to see what's going to be open, um, what happens. I know that that uh, facility actually was one of the first ones here in Pennsylvania to close because it it's a casino resort so people are touching things all over right um so we're waiting for that facility to open again right and that's causing well, delay yeah we are currently waiting for them to reopen however um i know betsy has been in communication with them via email i've been in communication with them um over email as well now, the word casino might cause a concern for some people. This is a very, very large facility. We will not come into contact with the casino at all. You don't even have to see the casino when we're there. If you'd like to skip out and spend $20, you're more than welcome to do that. But this is a, a large center, a very, very nice center. Everything will be in one building. Um, there won't be too much walking around. So this is very, very exciting where uh, the Mercantile and Grange store and everything will be right outside of session. So I know in Minnesota, you had to go down the hall into a different floor sometimes to get to um, see the Grange store and everything, but this will all be together. Uh, you won't have to do much wandering around the large facility. From what I understand, it's a facility that has kind of like two towers basically, and, and the casino resort style of that is in one and small lobby and connected to the other which is where all of our stuff will happen so you're right we won't be kind of cross commingling yeah now you will be going to both towers somewhat depending on where your room is depending on where if you're involved on a committee where your meeting might be but you're not going to be in contact with the casino much at all um, there will be other people coming in and out but it should not be an issue um and any conflicts there with running into our session, the business we need to run. And I know that's part of why you guys wanted to make sure that there was a robust amount of things for the general member, the youth member, and the junior members to do. So there wasn't um, real attraction to go wander um, over to that different side, especially for our younger folks. So um, I know your, your junior and your youth team because you have different teams coordinating different parts of this, have been meeting. Um, do you have any clues, any, any highlights to tell us about some of the things that we might see, or are we, are we still staying a little secret with some of those? Uh, we're still working on what the juniors and youth will be doing. We do have their tours booked up, um, but during session, we're gonna keep them busy with workshops. Um, the junior, uh, committee is Barb and Derek Schroeder who will be working with uh, Samantha obviously and then youth are Jen Noss and Philip Veneta who will be working with Mandy. I know they have been meeting and um, we'll have updates as we get closer. Um, the tour should be very very exciting but definitely want our youth and our juniors to be engaged. They're not only the future of our Grange, they are the present. And those, those two groups are my real motivation behind wanting to step up to this role. Um, not only because the Grange is something I truly love, but I'm doing this for the youth and the juniors. They're the ones who are motivating me and definitely pushing me to be uh, a better Granger and a better person. So. Definitely want them to have fun and have this part of their Grange journey. So someday we want them to be sitting there with a gold sash and we want that to be their, their inspiration as well. So I know um, some of the most exciting parts of the convention are when the youth um, open, they do a drill 
Um, and I know that some of the other things include like the youth and the junior talent shows and sign of songs. So that's all things that you can be preparing um, to enter into competition. I know we're changing some of the things that are normally, um, we normally do them at, at regional sessions um, and, and do elimination contests there. Uh, and so we're figuring some of that out. Um, but, you know, when, when you're planning this, you know, you kind of, as you mentioned, are looking towards that future um, of, of what those folks who are there as young people now are going to be seeing in the future. What are some of the things that you're hoping they take away from this experience? We want them to know that uh, National Session is something to look forward to. It, it's fun. It is some serious business, but it doesn't all have to be business want them to truly understand how our organization works with the grassroots the legislative action. And that it, it's something that the whole family can be involved in. Because as you know, at, at these sessions, there's entire families that, that fly out and show up and are sitting in session and getting involved in different workshops and checking out the different um, exhibits that are there. I know you've been doing a lot of these on um, Saturday night date night ends and there's so much talent out there when everybody is home kind of quarantined develop a talent and bring it to Valley Forge we we want the talent and we want everybody to be there to have fun after sitting in a session for a couple hours these delegates do need um, to let their hair down a little bit and, and have some fun and sit back and watch our youth and our, our juniors and our talented youth and juniors are definitely going to inspire our, our delegates um, to hold a great session and, you know, civil discussions within session. This is, we, we do it all for them. So um, is there a, a community service project that the region is planning or hasn't that been decided just based on what's going on now? We are working on a community service project. Something was uh, working on maybe a blood drive which is something we can do. And also, um, Gail Switzer is our community service director for this working um, with Pete Pomper. She was working um, on some local women's centers, um, donating socks um, and, and seeing what is needed in this area. But those details are still gonna be worked out, but definitely wanna have something community service oriented. That's another big part of the Grange. And while we're on Valley Forge, we want to definitely leave our mark in the community and have people say, wow, the Grange was just here. There's such an amazing organization. How can I get involved? So your Grange is one of the closest ones um, to Valley Forge itself. Um, I think this is one thing that we don't talk a lot about of the preparation before and after with those Granges that are closest that are gonna maybe benefit from the 500 people coming in with socks and leaving a good impression. So how is, um, for you, in your head, you may not have talked about it quite yet with Keystone, but how is Keystone preparing for December and January after, after National Session leaves and you guys have a bunch of people with really good taste in their mouth for Grange? Uh, great question. Right now we have a couple Eagle Scout projects which have been put on hold, but they will be coming in. They're going to be putting in a little free library outside, making a little bench, a little seating area, some gardening work. Um, our inside the hall is um, being approved, doing some detailed cleaning. I've had electricians in there to make sure everything is up to code and we can rent the hall out. We can have an influx of members. Definitely, I know this puts my local Grange kind of on a national map, and we are prepared for that. Also involved with some local historic societies that are directly across the street from my Grange Hall and wanting to partner with them because they are in the rebuilding phase and want to bring the light to the history we have in this area of the country, a lot of national history. Um, first Speaker of the House, Frederick Muhlenberg, is directly across the street from us. Uh, the Speaker's House. This is something we've been involved in for quite some time, working on their historic garden. Danae's been a member of their board. So we want to work in conjunction with our local historic society and bring a light to them. A lot of that is going to be one of our alternative tours is seeing these local historic um, buildings that are right here in Trap, just a couple of minutes from Valley Forge. So partnering with different organizations, um, it, it, it's a lot of fun. We are all trying to do the same thing in the community, bring light to our organizations, what we stand for, and we want to do this together as a team. 
So um, I noticed that, oh, there's, uh, well, you have to have Aurora make a guest appearance. I think you've referenced Danae a couple times. So this is a, this is a family event. So. This is little Aurora. She has her t-shirt on, which she had, which Danae made in um, Minnesota. She is the 2020 um, unofficial mascot, I guess you could say. But she has her t-shirt on, which I have mine on as well. We are promoting um, 2020 and she is so excited and she will be there for many, many long, long days and long nights and long hours putting this on. And I'm sure we'll have so much fun. She was a real hit in Minnesota and uh, she's part of my inspiration as well. I want to leave a great organization for her to grow up in and hopefully her children will be involved in this someday as well. Um, so we have a couple questions and I think that some of them, um, may not go to you per se, because as you've mentioned, you're really in charge of making sure that people feel like they've come home. Uh, they're part of the family, um, and that we've made a good impression in that area. So, um, one of the questions is how many people attend National Grange? And I know that we have about an average of 500. However, it varies by region. Um, and this region tends to come out a little bit more, especially because we're, we're closely knit and located um, nearby one another. So, Jean, what happens if you get 900 people at this thing? Uh, I'll do a happy dance. We would love to have 900,000 people there. Uh, the more the merrier. Uh, we have about 860 hotel nights to um, fill up, so I'm sure Betsy will be very, very happy as well. <laughs> um, yeah, bring them on, all of them. Okay, um, another question came about what happens to the event that National Grange would need to cancel due to coronavirus, and I'll take that at least for now, because I know that our National Grange Executive Committee is um, going to be discussing contingency plans when they meet in May. Um, obviously, when they met in February, this, this was not even what we're talking about today. Um, so there was no need at that moment to discuss contingency plans and they want to be in, in, able to do that um, in a well thought out manner. Um, obviously, when we put up our registrations, the stuff will be refundable if there is no session, um, at least in the way that it's being planned right now. Um, and the facility, of course, will have to do refunds of any room nights if they're not able to be open. So certainly once those things go live. We really encourage you to register um, to get your rooms because, you know, it, as long as there is a will, there there is a way, I think, um, when it comes to National Grange session. Um, Jean, I'm going to quiz you. Sure. So this is the 154th annual session, right? Yes. How old is the National Grange? Uh, from 1867 was the first year. Yeah, so doing my math backwards, whatever that comes out to. December 4th, 1867. So we're 152, we'll turn 153 in December. So how in the world do we get in, uh, in two more conventions than we've had years? There one or two years where there's two convention in one year. Um, we're going about Valley Forge like this is going to happen in November. We have our foot on the gas pedal. We're not putting our foot on the brake. Um, some things we are in a horny pattern with, but there's still emails I'm going to make. Um, I'm going to rent, put in a, a request to rent uh, transportation vans in May. I can't rent them till six months out. So we are in a horny pattern, but that is because we've been aggressive in the work we have done up to this point where we can afford to be in a hoarding pattern. And not that we're forced to, but we can. And anything that's shut down right now is not really affecting um, national session. If anything, airline tickets might be cheap right now. Yeah, if you're uh, flying in from somewhere, let me tell you, this is the time to consider booking um, because you will likely, if if necessary, be able to cancel that with a full refund or at least you know move that those fees based on on what your airline does. But boy, you could not maybe get a better year as far as the travel end of this yeah. uh, to come to national session. I'm sure that any organization out there or a company that you're buying things from right now has to have some type of refund policy and an understanding um, contracts are, are negotiable. And it seems like everybody out there is really working together at this time um, 
this this whole event corona thing is really bringing the country together in a good way so there is some positive coming out of this so don't be afraid to book your airline tickets start planning start taking vacation time for november i know i already have a week and a half off for this so i'm i'm all in from i'll be the first one there and the last one to leave whatever it takes to make this successful but i have my vacation time put in um and we're, we're going to do this in november you know fingers crossed we we are going about this like this is going to happen in november so um if I'm a, a general person coming in to convention, I should arrive maybe Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. What is your schedule that you recommend to people? And then Pete Pomper asked if you could talk a little bit about specifics of the non-delegate tour. I know you've gone over a little bit of it, but maybe some specifics. Yeah, the, we have the non-delegate tour. I have some notes here with it. Um, the general tour, I believe, will be on Friday, November 20th. That cost is going to be uh, $30 a person. It's going to go from Valley Forge to Independence Hall in Philadelphia. You'll get to tour Independence Hall to Liberty Bell. Um, lunch will be on your own. There's a local food court right there. It will then depart. Um, Philadelphia about 1.30 or so and go to Valley Forge National Historic Park. Um, we are able to book private tour guides there from the park. Um, he'll take you around a two hour tour of, of the park. It'll stop at specific locations within the park. And then from there, it will come back to the um, Valley Forge Resort about 4.30, 5 o'clock. Um, again, a lot of history in the area. If you can't see everything, um, I'm definitely going to have some local tourist information here um, from Valley Forge, um, as well as from the convention, the, the local visitor bureau. So that would be the general tour. That's the option one for the general tour. We have a second option for general tour as well. This is kind of the first time we're trying a second uh, tour. This one goes from the Valley Forge uh, Casino Resort to the Speaker's House, which is what I spoke about earlier, just right across the street from Keystone Grange. They will tour the Speaker's House, um, the Muhlenberg House as well. That was where uh, Peter Muhlenberg um, lived there. He was one of uh, Washington's generals, and his name is on the memorial there at Valley Forge. Um, also get to tour Augustus Lutheran Church, which is the oldest Lutheran church in the United States unchanged. This dates to the early 1700s. So a lot of history right there. That's also the church where we had Aurora baptized in the old part of the church. And then a bag lunch at um, Keystone Grange, number two. So hopefully we have a lot of people coming in. Um, we can talk about what we're doing at Keystone Grange locally and how we're involved with everybody else in the community. And then that will depart trap and go to the Valley Forge Park for a tour guide there. That should be, that would be $30 a person as well. Yeah. So those are tours for the general public they can see. Um, the junior youth and delegate tours are somewhat similar to that. Um, but we wanna showcase a lot of the local history we have right here. This is, this is national history that everybody knows something about. You get to be a part of it. And I know that um, one of the things that uh, Samantha and I just talked about is putting together a junior passport specific to Valley Forge area um, with some of the history there. And then juniors who are there or youth and adults if they want could get a passport kind of underway while they're there, which I think would be really cool for them to learn the history of that area. Um, That'd be great, back. yes. So, so expect that we're gonna be reaching out to you for some of that. Um, so Katie Squire said she was convention chair in 2000 in California, and Carrie Blassengame, who's on, of course, was convention chair last year. So it sounds like you've got some people rooting for you, um, and there's a whole bunch of people who are really excited. But here's a fun fact. Did you know that Betsy was a registration chair in Lancaster in 1979? Wow, I did not know that. Um, well, all right, so here's a good quiz. How many people about attended in 1979? 
1979, I was three years old. I was not there. But I would say being in Lancaster, the, the part of the country it's in, we have a lot of Grange people in this area. I would say uh, 800. Oh, buddy. 8,000 people attended National Grange Convention. I left a zero off. I'm sorry. <laughs> National Convention. So you, you have a, a bar to hit, it seems. Joking. Joking. Uh, could we handle 8,000 people today? I want to say yes, we would love to have that. That is simply We're going to figure it out. I think yeah. that they should try and bust the system and surprise us and try and beat that record. What do you think, Gene? I, I, I would love for that to happen, um, but <laughs> registering 8,000 people, that has to be quite an undertaking to I do think, that. I think Betsy would have to go back into draft status and help with the registration. Yes. <laughs> um, all right, so a couple other quick things. Um, <laughs> I'm wondering if uh, you have any specific um, encouraging words to some of our youth who might be watching. I saw Elliot Wildner was one of the ones watching who might be interested in doing youth officer team. Um, if there's anything that you would say that they, sh they should consider applying for that, taking part in that. Uh -oh. Absolutely. I was never a youth officer, um, but I know being a, a state officer in Pennsylvania, one of my proudest moments, I might sound like a Grange dork here, is, is when, when the officers march into to state session and, you know, everybody gives you a round of applause that that motivation just really hits you. And the youth officer drill is one of my favorite parts of of national session with all due respect to our national officers you know our youth really do a heck of a job in their music selection and what they do highly highly recommend um registering as a youth officer and and going through that experience um you're, you're teamed up with a a national officer and our our national officers have a lot of knowledge during that position for a reason and they have a lot to teach our youth and at the same time i'm gonna flip that coin our youth has a lot to teach national officers as well so hopefully you guys can team up your youth officer and national counterpart and, and learn from each other and talk to each other i know there usually is a workshop where the youth and national officers meet together and just talk so definitely get the chance to pick the brain of your national officers and any national officers who may be on, definitely listen to our youth officers and what they have to say because they are, 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 they are currently our organization, not only the future, they're, they're the current organization. Yeah, I think that one thing um, that I really like seeing is, is when those officers, the youth, the, the regular national grade officers get to meet and talk and some of the fun things that have been put in place like that meeting um, and like the fact that the ambassadors, uh, the national youth ambassador and national young couple this year uh, will get to sit on committees um, and help those committees with the technology, help them with the deliberations, yeah. um, talk to them about the, what they want to see the Grange being today and tomorrow. I think is a, such a neat um, addition to this convention. And while it's not something that everybody could see um, per se, it's definitely for you and I kind of on a different track of this, um, exciting and, and something we want to see lots of people apply to do, either as a youth officer or, you know, consider going to your state and trying to win that ambassador spot for your state so you can compete at that national level for that, that title too. Absolutely. Our, our, one great thing about our organization is youth member, um, national officer, we all have the same say and same strengths and, and same, same power, so to speak. In, in the grand. That's one thing I like about this organization. All the decisions aren't really dictated by one age group or one group of people. It definitely is nationwide. So definitely youth officers step up go to these committee meetings. They may be late at night, but this is what we are about and this is what we do. And that's, youth officers don't just come from this region, even though there's a number of states in this region that you mentioned, um, it, they can be from anywhere in the country, right? Yes, absolutely. I think that that's also the cool thing. This is a national convention. So even though you're there hosting it, 
and you know, making it the best it can possibly be um, from your region, you're hosting a national event. You're really inviting and welcoming people. From yeah, this isn't a Pennsylvania convention. It's not an Eastern Seaboard convention. This is a national convention. Um, of course, we have a lot of Pennsylvania people involved and, and Eastern people involved, but my motivation is every Grange member in the country from your, your junior members to our, our, our senior members. Um, this is for everybody. So, so I, we, we talked before this um, and I jokingly said I knew that somebody was going to ask this. Of course, they messaged it to me privately because they didn't want to get called out. But um, Jean, can you tell us how the food is there and if there's anything other than chicken that can be served? The food there is simply amazing. Um, Danae and I have gone there uh, a couple of times to meet with them to talk about upcoming um, uh, meetings that we're having. Um, we met with Betsy and Ellen there as well. They 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 wow. took very good care of us. Um, the one pub that we sat in, they they bought us lunch. Excellent, excellent food. This um, center has about seven restaurants, so you don't have to get your meal through us. We prefer you really do because we do have the best prices and bulk prices. Um, the, the food there is quality. This is a quality, top notch resort casino the food will be phenomenal um there'll be other options than, than chicken um so if they do have chicken there it's going to be some of the best chicken you had so definitely um support the grange and, and get the meals um through your registration but you're you're more than welcome to do what you need to do for meals um and, and part of the best part of the meal is you're sitting there with people from across the country you don't normally get to see. Like I could sit at a meal with all kinds of people from Pennsylvania who I see 20 times a year, but maybe I want to see, you know, friends from Minnesota or, or friends from California or friends from Nevada or friends from Texas. I have a chance to actually sit there and have a meal with these people that might only happen once or twice a year. So how do you really put a price on having a, a good quality meal with friends from across the country that this may only happen once in their lifetime, who knows? Um, so definitely book the meals through the National Grange. You won't be disappointed. Um, it's more about the food in your plate. It's about the fellowship and other people in your room as well. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, I, I agree with you. You can't quantify what it, what it means to be able to sit at those meals um, going off site, you know, we eat there for almost 10 days staff. Um, so every once in a while, you just kind of feel like you got to itch and get away a little But um, there is nothing like going to those lunches or dinners and being able to sit next to people that you only see once a year or once every yes. two years. So, um, you know, if it's a $25 meal I could have across the street or a $30 lunch that I could have there, it, there's no question that, you know, it's worth that extra $5 for that friendship and fellowship that you get. Yes. Um, the last thing I think uh, was the question about the hotel itself, um, question about the rooms and the you know parking and that type of thing. Just um, anything that you can tell us about that hotel, um, because it, it seems that this person ran into kind of a firewall, I guess, on the, the website for the hotel because they're not taking yeah, it right it's now. It's a, a very large facility. Um, every time I was there, I never had a problem finding a parking spot. I know there is even, tons of empty parking locations right there. Um, right now, trying to get onto their website to view things, you could have some issues. I know there's some internet issues with everybody trying to get on to claim on employment, everybody doing Zoom meetings from home, homeschooling. Uh, but I guarantee you there is plenty of parking there. Um, I don't know if there's parking for 8,000 cars, but there, there's parking for you know eight 900 vehicles there. I, I don't think that would be an issue. and. Once you do get there and park, you should not have to move your vehicle at all. Um, I did have a couple members even ask me if they can park their RV out there in the parking lot. I, I'm still gonna look into that as well. Um, people wanna know about local campsites. Um, parking would not be an issue. Now, we are very close to um, King of Prussia Mall, which is one of the largest malls east of the Mississippi. Um, second largest mall in the country, actually, next to Mall of America. So there, there's a lot of cars in the area, lots to do, but parking is not an issue at all. 
And then I know the rooms, there's various, there's kings and double kings and queens and double queens. And there's all kinds of different room configurations and everything. So people should be able to, if they want to come with a friend, uh, share a room, cut the costs, those type of things as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, share rooms if you need to. This is going to be like any other typical hotel we've had session in or people have their state sessions in. Um, you have different options. I know our youth will usually go in together and, and get rooms together. Um, if you guys are traveling from out of state or want to pick up something in another state, um, this is also a good time that you have friends from across the country you don't get to normally see. Split a room with them. Hang out together afterwards and, and just talk about life, your family, um, what you're doing at your individual range, what you're doing at the state range. So definitely join in together with rooms and take advantage of it. Yeah. And I know that, you know, sometimes you can price shop a little bit online, um, but we do have a, a very good room rate. Um, and as Jean mentioned, um, you know, there are certain expectations that hotels, any convention center puts on uh, an event like this in order to give us the room space for the, the actual session, all of the meetings, all of the workshops, everything like that. Um, you know, there's a certain spend. So we have 890 room nights to fill. That means if you get come and you stay over for two nights, you have filled two of those 890. So we do really uh, hope that you'll look at booking through our group rate once that information is available. Um, and that information we expect to go up in May. Um, uh, obviously, barring any real change in, in status here with what's going on with COVID. So um, Jean, if there's anything else that you wanna add, uh, I know that Carrie Blassingame last year's chair said that she's driving from Illinois and will pick up hitchhikers along the way. I hope they're going to be Grange hitchhikers. Nice. Um, but yeah, I think that this is a great way to, you know, caravan, enjoy, enjoy the fellowship, really enjoy the homecoming. So anything that you guys want to add? No, um, I'm very much looking forward to, to Valley Forge. I'm looking forward to seeing people. Um, I work for every Grange member in this country in this position. Um, I am here for you. I am here to assure you have the best possible, best possible experience at Valley Forge. Um, took a lot of notes in Minnesota. Been working on this for two years. Despite the current situation, um, still planning on registering for National Grange coming up. Um, if anybody has any questions, um, easily reach on Facebook. You can also email me at 2020 at pagrange.org. That's 2020 at pagrange.org. That's an email we have set up where I'm fielding um, different emails and doing work out of that. Uh, my phone number, 484-948-6916. Give me a call. Email me. Message me. Um, I am here to make 2020 successful for anybody out there. Um, this is for you. This is not for me. This isn't for Pennsylvania. This is for our everyday Grange member to make sure they enjoy their 2020 and come to Valley Forge and have a great, great time and come out with some motivation that hopefully they'd like to step up to a host committee for Granges in their region. It's not a difficult job, a um, lot of work involved, but it's a labor of love. It's awesome. Uh, I have one, uh, one other question I apologize that I didn't see earlier, so I'm gonna ask it to you now, and that is, as people come into the hospitality suite, which is where you get some of your uh, free snacks, what, what is the thing that they can look forward to in the hospitality suite this year? What we're going to do with the hospitality suite is we can't bring in outside homemade foods. That's a little bit different due to some health restrictions. What you can look forward to is some great local Pennsylvania snacks, chips and pretzels and Hershey's chocolate. And if we can work it out, a scrapple bar, if possible. Um, each state will be bringing in some food, so hopefully some good local Pennsylvania goodies that everybody will enjoy. Um, Carl Wagner from West, Western Pennsylvania is heading up our hospitality room and is doing a great, great job. Um, 
we want to have milk and chocolate milk for people. Um, healthy food as well. Um, also, the hospitality room is only designed to hold people over between meals or as a quick snack. So we want to make it work, make it enjoyable, make it a, a great place to be and uh, a place to be seen. Um, and, and hopefully that will work out well with what we want. If anybody has ideas for the hospitality room concerns, definitely let me know. We will do what we can do to accommodate. That's awesome. I've, I've heard tell of something that might happen outside the hospitality room, a photo booth of some sort. So we're going to get to see all kinds of fun stuff at Valley Forge. And uh, we can't wait to be there. At least I can't wait to be there. Um, convention is definitely one of the highlights of the year. It's stressful and as, as crazy as it is for staff, we love seeing you. Um, and I, I know I see Loretta and Pete who are working on the convention stuff as well, who've been on here encouraging people to come. So we look forward to being with you out there, Jean. And uh, thank you for letting us know what's going to go on this year. And before uh, or just when registrations go up, we're going to probably have a quick powwow um, of this as well to talk about some of the new features that are being introduced, new events and things. So schedule change stuff. So thank you for joining us, Gene. Uh, thank you, it's my pleasure. Um, Valley Forge is the place to be in November, family friendly. Um, youth and Junior is gonna have a blast. Everybody will have a lot of fun. Um, and any questions, comments, concerns, let me know, lay it on me. I am 100% committed to the success of this national session. Awesome. Thank you so much, Gene. Have a great night. Bye, everybody. Stay safe, stay well, wash your hands. Thank you, bye.